There is a battle brewing between big box retailers. Shares of Walmart and Costco have been wildly divergent over the last several months, but the chartmaster says that could be about to change. Cornerstone Macro's Carter Braxton North joins us now to chart it out. Carter, what are you seeing? You bet. Well, I just put out a note this morning talking about a pairs trade, simply uh, making the case that if you're long both, reduce some of your Costco and add to your Walmart. And if you're a long short player, shorting Costco and buying Walmart. Let's look at a few comparative charts and um, figure it out together. So the first is a two-year comparative chart. You can see the parallel lines and then the divergence. Uh, we're talking about now what, Walmart being up 65% versus, um, excuse me, uh, Costco versus Walmart up half that. Or, or look at the next comparative chart. This is a three-year, uh, the divergence. So uh, they were tracking quite closely, and then they have diverged since the pandemic low, and that's the issue. Is this divergence sustainable? You're talking about a spread now of almost uh, 40%. So the thinking here is that Walmart is not, has not had earnings, and it's likely to, we think, break out. And Costco, on the other hand, third and final chart, look at the channel in which Costco has been ascending since the pandemic. I mean, that is literally the definition of a 45 degree angle, godlike. Uh, but Costco is up against the upper band of the channel. And so the thought is, you know, you reduce one and you shore up the other. Uh, you know, anyone can say, of course, that Costco is the better business. It is, it has twice the earnings growth rate. It also trades at twice the multiple. But the point is, tactically, and this is, this is, there's no way around this. The spread is too wide, and I think Walmart's the better bet here, playing for a breakout after earnings. Carter, when you take a look at the Walmart chart independent of the Costco chart, what in that chart looks good to you? Right, so a couple things. I mean, it has been a major laggard, obviously, to the market, but it's starting to exhibit relative performance to its uh, peer group, to the consumer staple sector. And I mean, look, even today, just uh, it's nice when things work out on one day. But I mean, you're talking about a performance up, you know, 218 basis points versus 58 basis points for Costco. Uh, will that keep going? We think you'll get uh, divergence and now convergence. We think it breaks out. 170 uh, is what we think. Carter, let me ask you something. Have you looked at Walmart versus any of the others? Like, for example, a Target? Yeah. Or is it the, yes? Oh, good. Sure. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm looking at all of them. I mean, yeah, I, if you're staring at, I mean, a grown man staring at charts for 14 hours a day, it's kind of absurd in and of itself, but it is what I do. So I'm looking for <laughs> ratios, looking for relationships, looking for opportunities. And um, look, uh, Target's uh, blown, away, uh, blown away Walmart, of course, and maybe that's the better comp. Um, look, Target seems awfully extended here, too. Let me just uh, say one thing since we're, we're talking about, uh, just back to Costco, do you know that there are 36 analysts covering the stock, and collectively their 12-month price target is below where the stock is trading now? Now, how can all 36 people collectively believe that in 12 months the stock will be lower than it is now, unless either they've got something wrong or maybe the stock's expensive? I think Target stretch, I think Costco stretch, I think Walmart's the better bet. Love Carter. <laughs> Carter okay. Worth, thank you. Carter Braxton Worth, the Cornerstone Macro. Guy Nami, you with Carter on this Paris trade. Listen, Carter was the person that told you back in uh, early spring that Caterpillar was overbought to the upside. The stock sold off about $35. He was a guy that told you Bitcoin was getting ready for a huge sell-off. You saw what happened. He was also the person that said uh, that yields were going to go significantly lower when 10 years were trading around 1.4. Obviously, we just had a conversation about that. So if he tells me Walmart's the next stock to go higher. I'll be with them. And I happen to agree, by the way. Costco's up 42% since March. Something has to give. And oh, by the way, throw another retailer in there. Dollar Gen reports, I think, on the 26th of August. That stock now getting into health care. They just announced they're going to hire 40,000 people by Labor Day. I think that's a stock that continues to rally into earnings. Tim? Well, look, he's also talking about it from, from a bias of the market overall. And, and, and Guy's also talking about it as a pair trade, or they're both talking about it as a pair trade. Walmart's been the short side of a lot of pair trades over the last 18 months, um, where it was you know, funding for hedge funds. I think the, the long bias takes over here. Look, the breakout of the stock, again, up through 148-ish. Let's get through that 152 level, which is where we were when we were pricing in a lot of Walmart Plus, et cetera. Uh, it should be defensive. The valuation at you know, 25 times forward is not not demanding. And I actually think you know, inflation helps a Walmart. So, uh, you know, these are all factors that I feel very comfortable owning Walmart. And I think it has uh, underperformed for too long.
At this point, Karen, I mean, you own Target and, and Walmart. Walmart. Right. Which do you like better? Well, I guess my book would say Target because I own more Target and more dollars in Target. I think the mix that's happening now as we get less groceries, more apparel, more things like that that have better margins, that's better for Target. But the run in Target has been higher. Still, the Target valuation is cheaper, 21 times versus 24, 5 for Walmart. So I'm going to stay with both. I like them both. I don't do really pairs trade, but I agree with Carter, which I should do more often.